lose their lives doing something that they love is not because of negligence of the official. All right, right now I'm looking around right now and I don't see anything right now except for that <laughs> stick right there that they can hurt, get hurt on. So as an official, I have to make up my mind is that gonna be something I'm gonna address? That little, I know why they put it there, but should it be that close? See, I'm saying right now at NCAA, uh, uh, USA Track and Field, if this was it, I probably as the field, as, uh, as the judge over here, I would make them move that. Oh, way out a little closer to the feet. That's what I would do. I would ask them to. I don't think that's safe, but I know they just had a, a competition here, and because it's that close, some judge had to say, it's all right. And even if you didn't say it was all right, the mere fact that you let it stay over here, you just inadvertently said, it's all right. So we're gonna start with we're gonna start with Lorenzo, and uh, cause I I really want to learn some more about what he's doing now. I brought the wrong bag. I thought I was bringing. I thought I had. I got two of these bad boys. One for one thing, one for another. This here has everything to do with timing, timing equipment. We're not even gonna go with that. Don't even. I'm so I'm so sick of seeing it. Today we're gonna start this area here of starting the races for the start commands, the hundred dash, hundred hurdles. And we'll work our way up. Did we say we're going to start the 200 start and the 400 as well? Or we're just going to start with this? We're going to start with you. I'm saying for how many sprint races we're going to cover today. Just, just the, okay. We said the hurdles. Yeah, we do the curve. Okay. So we'll do the 100 dash and the hurdle starts here. Then we'll work our way to the curve starts for the 400 meters. On that end of the track, we'll cover a lot more events as well um, in that start area. Equipment wise, uh, starting with the starter. Equipment wise, on a bigger scale, most times you can get away with it if you don't have it. Um, myself, uh, I try to use as much as I can so I don't wear myself out. Um, a stool, a, a little small step ladder will help when you're far away distance wise and people can stand so anyone down if you're the finish line here can't see the starting hand, the starting arm, you're going to backside 200. There's a lot of tents in the center field, a lot of traffic. You're standing on the ground, people can't really see your arm, regardless if they have a sleeve or not. So it really helps if they have a step ladder, you stand tall above the ground so you can see your arm. All right. The next thing that on the collegiate level, we, they really stress a lot is it's an amplifying system, a microphone that you can use to amplify your voice, especially if you're the only starter. We have a staggered start race when we talk about 200 starts and the 400 starts, and especially the four by four. Relay teams, when that stagger gets really wide, when, when I say stagger, you see what I mean? When you start down and see it, when it's there, when it's there, around the curve. If you're the only starter, and you have to position yourself where you can see all eight lanes, lane one or lane eight may not hear you, depending on where you position yourself. And with the crowd noise going by, depending on where you are, if you be, you got traffic cars flying by, whatever, and you got train tracks coming by on the south side, there's a lot of noise. And your voice may wear down by the time you start a race early in the morning, the four by eight. By the time you get to 200 that afternoon, you're hoarse. And your, your voice is tired, you're, you're tired of yelling and screaming. So the best thing to use is this amplifier system where your mic is you use your regular voice, turn up the volume, everyone can hear you. And then there's no issue or problems. So um, you see a lot of us that when we do our college meetings at Florida State, we use a lot of amp systems. Some of the guys who are well endowed with money have the more proficient five, six thousand dollar systems. Uh, I got this from Sam's for a hundred dollars. So it, it's, it's, and it works just the same. It works just the same. So, but either way, um, you want to make sure that you're amplifying your voice. When you go to the state championship meets, you'll see at the high school state meets, you'll see those guys using amp systems um, to amplify their voices so they can hear what's going on. All right, and it's, it's good to have it in other events as well. You have a lot of good crowd noise. All right, your flags. Now, here's the trick to this. If you're the only starter, it's going to get kind of aggravating using the flag and using the gun and trying to shoot a gun. If you got calls to make a false start of that, <clears throat> of that, of that nature, trying to communicate with the, uh, um, the, uh, the timer, the trench line. So you want to make sure that you go in and you order, when you order your equipment stuff, you order you some cards as well. Right, they, um, they're really cheap, inexpensive, and you can make them yourself if you want to. Uh, this is plastic, you can make them large or big, whatever case, <laughs> whatever case you want to do. But these cards use the same as the flags, okay? And the color of the flags, somebody asked me about the coloring, so I'll let you know how the color works. Now, yellow, we don't use in the running, as far as down here is concerned. But we could use it if we want to. 
but these are the three main colors we're going to use. So ideally, the flags going to be used by the recall starter, or maybe you have a clerk down here lining them up in the lanes. They can help you with flagging. So that's the one that's really off the head starter. So the flagging, so you line them up, and we're ready to go. So we let the finish line know. We're white down here. We're ready to go. They may have red at the finish line because they're whatever the case may be going to happen. We let them know that we're ready on this end, okay? If we're not ready because whatever issues we got going on down here on this end, we call a starter or the clerk will have the red flag up on this end. They may be white on that end. They have up a red. Once we're ready, we'll go white. During the call of the race, if there is a situation where we have to recall the start because the gun went bad, bad click, or an athlete raised their hand, and I'll go through that in a few minutes, for some reason why we call them up and it's not a false start, we will let them know that it's a green flag. It wasn't a violation down here. But they'll think, the time the first thing the time is going to think is it was a disqualification. It was a DQ, why did you call the race back? So we let them know that if there was no DQ at all, if something happened on this end, we'll start the race over. Right? In the case of a false start, in the case of a false start, the first thing you want to do is if you have a, a team, a starting team, yourself and the recall starter, the minute Gun goes off, bam. Race goes off, recall shoots it back, and there's a false start. The recall starter and the starter come together and communicate, see, what did you see versus what I see? I might have seen lane four, he might have seen lane three. Well, maybe lane four calls lane three, vice versa. It might have been a combination of lane three and one, and I didn't see one. So we're gonna talk about it before we make a judgment call. Once we call, and we figure out it's one person, take your red flag or your red card, Stand in that lane. Let the athlete know, lane one, you're out. Standing in the lane allows the fans and the timing to know lane one is the violation. Don't just stand. I said, I'll meet the other guy. I guess like, kid falls out, he points to the kid, you out. That's not a professional way to go. All right? You want to step in the lane on the track, in that kid's lane. Even talk to the kid, let him know. The kid gets too pressure to walk off, then that's just his choice. But if you want an explanation as to why, hold up the car. Lane two, you out. Hold up your car high so they'll see the car, or if you have a flat for your um, signal. Right? Now, there are some times when you may have a double double foul, where you have two guys jump at the same time, and yet yeah, you can't put both of them out. You can't do that. If this, if you, if you agree that both of them came out at the exact same time, then yes, you can't put them out. All right? Now, other so ways to. by yourself. Do you make that call or do you just... If you're by yourself, that's a call you have to make. And that's a judgment call. That's a judgment call. How do you handle this situation, Coach, when an athlete is standing here and you tell them that you're DQ because you jump, and the athlete says, no, that wasn't me, that was him. Mm -hmm. I didn't jump. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to speak to my coach for, because I wanna, I'm going to run this way. I didn't DQ. <laughs> as an official, now, as you, an official, how do you? If you're John that? Drummond, you want to protest in the middle of the <laughs> If you, I got but a kid, it happens. It, it, it happens. If you got a kid that's been, um, I want to say belligerent, yeah. but if you got a kid who does not want to exit the track oh, right. for whatever reasons, they want to contest what you say. You ask them players to leave the track. If they don't want to leave, it's called meet management down. The head referee, oh. official, uh, will the, uh, the school representative for that person is get the person over you, the meet representative. Uh, the referee, get them to y'all, get them to come down, escort the kid off the cut. If you got to call that kid's coach over and get, escort him off the track. While they're talking, guess what? Run that race. Do not hold up the track meet because of somebody else. If they want to protest, take them off the track, run the race, and let them decide whether it's going to be a rerun. And it won't be because a false start is a judgment call on the official. You cannot protest a false start. Simple as that. And he can say it wasn't my fault, whatever, but. If I'm the fish, if I'm the track, if I'm the, uh, the starter, if my start team, if we agree that it was you in lane two that was the false starter, then you're out. And there's no way you can get around it. Except for that. You cannot argue if there's no protesting about it. That's a judgment call. <coughs> uh, the green flag, would that mostly be held out before the start of the gun, or would that be held out? Yes, before the gun. Before the gun. Mm -hmm. Unless the fence line knows that it's all going this end, there was no violation. We have, it's a, like I said, gun clicks. I got a bad click and it didn't go off. And the kids pop out. It's, it's, it's take the green flag and wave it. Let them know it wasn't a violation. No one had a false start. We're not bringing it back because of a false start. It is a gun click. We're bringing the race back. That's what the problem is there.
In that scenario that you just had and the kid disrupts me, is he ejected from the entire army? No. Not unless he does something that would violate the rule that yeah. we put him out. Now, if you, if all, he, all he's doing is just... He's protesting he's and holding pro up the beat. He's holding the record beat up. But again, no, the if he used foul language or something like that, yeah, then that... And that's a rule violation. Yeah, if he's going to be belligerent and being yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct that like goes against rules, now that's a whole different scenario. But if he just sit there, I'm not going to leave the track. Okay, well, I'm going to call the meet the I'm going to call the, the referee. So they're going to move. He'll yeah. come down and say, whatever team it is, Garvey High School, find the announcer, and the head coach or coach representative of Garvey High School, please come to the start line. They squeeze him off the track, let the coach handle him. You try your best to start get away from the confrontation, let the meet director and the head coach handle it so that you don't get involved with the one-on-one, because -on -one. that's really not our responsibility. If they want to be that belligerent about the situation of the kid, again, call the head, head official down, get that coach, get that kid's coach over, let them handle it as quick as they get him off the track or her off the track. You continue with the event. Don't let them hold you up. But try your best not to get into a one-on-one -on -one with a kid. If he wants to get confrontational with you, don't let him. Just, just don't let him blow your cool. Keep your cool. You be professional about what you're doing. You stay relaxed at all times. Stay in control. Right. I mean, kids will try to try you as far as get under your skin, especially that the district, the regionals. He's trying to qualify to go to state. And it's the finals in the 100-meter dash. And he's trying to get there. He's a senior. You may have one or two that's going to fight you as far as fight the call. But again, you stay on your ground firm on what you call, and you roll with it. Don't don't second guess yourself. If you know that's the call, then make the call. Now that did happen in the 1984 Olympic, the Olympic Christian from, in, from um, England. He both started in lane four. He held up the meet. They had to escort him from the meet because he wouldn't leave. They couldn't run the race because he was standing there with his shirt off saying, I didn't fall stop. John Drummond did too, man. Yeah. They, they, they stopped the hill, but he, he held up the meeting. It wasn't a starter. Yeah. He held up the meeting because he would not leave. They had to get the police to escort him from the meeting. He just kept walking around, I didn't fall stop. And he would not leave. They tamed the 100 meters for about 10 to 15 minutes. But he finally left and they was able to run. But that's what the rest will have to take if something like that happens. Again, don't let them hold you up. Don't let them try to confuse you or anything like that. Once you make a call, you make that call, and you're done with it. Um, any other questions before I go in first? Now, as far as what's a false start? What did it take to false start? Starting blocks. Once the athlete set the starting blocks. Who's your? You got a block? I, I, I don't know. Oh, I'll show it. Oh, come on. Demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. You want to call some man? Yeah, I'll call him man. Okay. Now, once we get in, it says heat one coming up. While I'm waiting, the kids are setting their blocks, they're getting everything straight. You allow them to get a practice start if you wanted them. Allow them to get a practice start in, they set their blocks, get out. Now, while they're doing their practice starts, what we're doing as a, as a starters, and, start, and we call starters, we're watching to see are the blocks mechanically working great. Is it going to slip on the kid while he takes the um, block start out? Is the pedal set? Because a lot of kids don't know how to use starting blocks. The high school level, believe it or not, trust me, we're watching. They don't know how to set their blocks. Some of them, I, say, I saw a kid take the pedal, put it on the side of the rail while the rail was there. She put her foot in that dog on thing, and that thing just jacked out in front of She fell flat on her face. So help the kid. It's okay to help them out and give them a little bit of direction if you see it's going to hold the race up. Because if they don't, you know, what's going to happen after a couple of minutes, they're still fumbling with it. It's tell them. Look, um, I think Mike is safe. Don't just start the blocks right now, but you need to practice with the coach and let him help you with your blocks. Right now, I'm taking them away from you, putting them on the grass. You can do that. You got a coach over there trying to, no, my kid gonna use the Look, coach, the kid cannot use the blocks, we know that. He's holding the race up. Now, you gonna, come, you gonna work with him, take the block, take the kid on over there. I, I put it back on the coach. I said, you gonna work with him? Fine. Take the block, hit the kid, take him on the grass. I'm gonna run this race. They'll shut up. AAU, summer league, you gonna get it all the time. Mm -hmm. Little seven, eight year old, they use the block, I'm gonna use the block. The block weigh more than you, you can't pick it up. But they try to do it. So, <laughs> Again, don't let anything or anyone hold the race up. Okay, we don't want to run. Clerk the timer and the starter. We got to work in unison, get everything smooth, running. Never hold the race up. Once the block is set, and you see where they're coming out and it's not moving on them and everything's stationary, then you give them the command to stand behind their block, stand tall. If the block continues to slip, make the spikes missing at the bottom, you need a block holder, find an athlete in the next seat or someone standing by, come ask them to come stand on their blocks. Okay? And then that'll help them have the race to go along a lot faster. All right, the start command for sprint races. Let me do right here and get this. I'm not going to fire my gun, but I'm going to stand tall. And... That's 
Yeah, enough shooting yesterday. I'm tired of shooting. Once we get the all green from the, oh, I'm sorry, white flag from the finish line, a real white flag here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let them come back to you. Let's go next first, then we'll come back to you. Let me in second, let's go. Let's go next. Yeah. On the start command, once the gun is set, if we're using a remote sensor from the start, from the clerk, I mean the timer, there's a remote sensor that we use to put on our fingers. Then we sensor to start, put it on our finger, hang it, hold it up. I hold the gun very high so everyone can see it, nice and high. At the very start of the command, hold the gun up. All right, don't have it down here, go through the command. Then when you say set, then raise the gun up. Have the gun up at all times so they can see the gun at all times through the commands. So once I get here, my three commands are on your mark, set, and I fire the gun. Just that calm, just that relax. And where do we stand when you're doing this oh, yeah, as an official? Okay, you yeah, have to get there. Now, we don't want to, uh, my, my old coach, Harry Jacobs, is about to come out. <laughs> we don't want to come out and say, on your mark. <laughs> <laughs> Set. Then fire the gun. Don't do it. If you have a recall stop, stands on the line. Yeah. Huh? Recall stop stands you gotta on the line. Okay. If we yeah. have, if you, if you, got, you have your rule books, look at your rule books and you'll see that we give you the commands to call. And they want you to make clear, precise calls. Nothing long and drawn out like you sing in the national anthem. You say the word set. That's it. Because if you hear that echo that in, my back, in your background now as I'm talking because it's coming up the back of the wall, the kids get confused. But then sometimes when the gun goes off, they hear that echo, that thing is a recall, you know, and they'll come back. So the commands have to be very precise and clear. On your mark, on your mark, not take your marks. On your mark, set, and the gun goes off. Now the position of the starter, it varies based on what event, if you're by yourself. If I'm by myself, and I'm a starter. I want to probably, if this thing, if this gate wasn't in the way, I'm probably going to position myself right about where she's standing now, closer to the line, so that I can see the block movement, and I can see all the way down the track on the on that line line. What I'm looking for is if are the hands. Where'd you get that from? If the hand, that the fingers cannot touch any white at all. Where his hands are now on the lane line, that's considered a false start because he's touching the line. Believe it or not. Now, if his hands are even back off the line, but they're touching the lane line left and right, if they're too far yeah, wide, if they're too far wide, put them out there wide, that's a false start because he's out of his lane. Basically, he wants to touch all red. Will you let him start that way and then? I'll give him command, yes. Let's say he was on the white line. And I'm standing here while everybody's getting ready. Lane two, use your hands off the line, please. That's, the, that's what you do. Lane four, your hands off the line. Back off the line, lane four. So we're checking to make sure everybody's on the line. And the recall starter is doing the same thing. And you see, he's going to position himself directly down the line. So you can see the lane line where the hands are, as well as the back of the block, the block slips from the back. If you have a three-man start crew, one, two is there, and three is directly behind lane four, center. So he'll see it as well, the block slippage, anything else. And he'll give us a signal call. Now, Coach, I'm going to need you to put that book down for me. Put the gun in your left hand. And what we're going to do here is our hand signaling for a two-man crew or a three-man. Two-man crew and our hand signals. Hands will be down first when I give the command. On your mark, when I say set, once the athlete come up in set position, what we, now we have a two-man crew. He's going to take four lanes towards Gilmore, and I will take four lanes. I'm on this side of the track. I'm going to look at lanes five, six, seven, eight, away from me, far, furthest away. He'll look at lanes four, three, two, one down that way, because that's close. It's better in his vision. It's, it's, sight, it's line of sight. So I'm going to look at lanes four, I mean five, six, seven, eight, and that's all I'm going to look at. When it, before, right before I fire the gun. He'll look at lanes four and down. That's his responsibility. So if anything happens far start wise, four through one, he'll see that. I'll see five through eight. Okay? Now, right before I say set, he's going to raise his hand out, open up. That lets me know he's ready. His, his four lanes are ready. My four lanes are ready. There'll be another pause in there, then I'll fire the gun. Understand? So, and what he's watching for again, like I said, any block slippage, hand on the line, any hand movement, twitching, whatever the case may be. In the set position, when athletes come up in the set, they have to hold that position and lock it still for at least a count before you fire. Now, as a, as a, a, a starter, we've been taught, I've been taught to use 
somewhere between 1.5, 1.8 seconds, no more than two, between the set and the gun fires. To make sure that kid is not trying to do what we call a rolling start. They're trying to get out while, the gun, while he's still moving forward. When they go up and set, the hips are not moving, the hands are still on the ground, and they'll lock that position before the gun goes off. If the body's still rolling while you're firing the gun, that could be considered a false start. In the set position, what's considered a false start? That hand may twitch. You see kids twitch, their feet kind of twitch a little bit, like he's rocking and shaking. If he dislodges from the starting block, which means that foot is just like that. If his foot comes off the pedals, that's a false start. If his hands come off the track, just one hand, that is a false start. Anything simulating movement forward would be considered a false start. If he twitches like that, it's not a false start. But as a starter, what we want to do is, if he keeps twitching, stand him up. Let him relax himself because he's too jittery, he's too nervous. All we're going to say is, right, um, stand up. That's our call for me. Lane two, take your time, relax. Give him, let him know, I saw what you're doing. Calm him down. Sometimes you're gonna get down, you're gonna talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, so you don't embarrass him, that's okay too. You're gonna get that, some kids get a little nervous, you know, especially with the final race. Let him know that, okay, we're gonna bring the race up. So when you have to call the race up, you say stand up, that's the command for everybody to stand up, okay? And then we'll recall the race again. So I'm going to go through the car. I'm going to start the command real fast so you can see a natural start. All right? On your mark. And I'll wait for you. Set. <laughs> now that is a, that's a natural, or natural, easy. Man, don't let me stand there that long. I, know, I, I thought you had a flashback. Wait on him and say, "Yo, that's your fault." <laughs> hey, I wait for him. He didn't give me a signal. Some high school coaches teach the athletes to be the last one to get ready, so they. We gonna do all that. You you bring the rest. So I just <laughs> simulated a real part of me. My bad. Uh, right. <laughs> now what we're going to do is show you some things that we have what we call these prima donnas. They're going to take their time, get in the blocks, <laughs> do all the extra stuff movements, you know. And all so you got eight lanes out. You got everybody, just like Mr. Gilmore said, you got a kid who's been taught, and I teach it, I'm not going to lie, I tell my kid, be the last one. Down. I don't want you to be held in the gun so long. But, you know, that's what everybody comes and get their own little things. So anyway, you got a kid who's taking forever to get in the blocks. Everybody's stretching, getting down, he's still standing up doing this little ritual or whatever the case may be. When that happens, you tell him, stand up. You tell him, stand up real quick. If that kid's taking too long, you tell him, stand up. Lane four, uh, lane two, you're taking too long to get in the blocks, son. Get in the blocks quickly. That's your first warning. That's a yellow flag or yellow card. That is a warning. If they do it again, is a delay of a false start. Well, the technical term, they're delaying the race, so you can't put them out. So do you have to take the yellow flag, walk into his lane, and yes. hold it up? Okay. Yes, yes. That way, you, the, the, the finish line and the coach, wherever that coach may be standing, you, you know, I just warned your kid of his delay in starting. So he'll know. Once you give him the yellow flag, he understands that's your first warning. If he does it, and you tell him, if you do it again, you will be out of the race. Simple as that. And you have that, you have that right. Okay. <clears throat> so within that command, should the assistant uh, start to position himself where he can hear what we're saying? Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. And it, if that happens, we have delay. We still, and we treat like a false start. I come off the podium. We come together. We give him the yellow flag. We go back, take his position. I take my position, and we start the race over again. It's simple as that. We got some kids who will take their time doing that. We got kids who will make sound effects, you know. They talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so, those type things, you're going to get them a lot of times. And more so the boys than girls. The girls are going to be so quiet, they won't say a yeah, word. But the guys, we will have that problem. Now, I'll tell you something about girls. Um, I won't get into the gender stuff, but uh, girls. That's okay, we are. Um, <laughs> uh, with the girls, you have girls that like all this extra.
Yeah. Okay. Mojo's. They, they fall down over their face and they're in the starting line. The photos. And then they're in the starting line and they're here and they're trying to <laughs> step back. No. Stand up. Lane three. Tell them. You, you have something. Walk over to them. You have anything to tie your hair up with? Do you have something you can wrap it up? You got a rubber band on your wrist, rubber tied up with? Do something with it. If not, if they keep holding the race up because of that, step off the track. That happened to me in Florida High. Girl was had a hair and it was in a set position. I could have called a false start, but I said, okay, she's going to get caught right in the fire. She took her hand off the track and did her hair like this. It was a middle school me. And I said, set, she did this with her hair and tried to pull it. I shot the gun. <laughs> and she was back right there trying to get the hair. And I said, well, You'll know next time. <laughs> so I, you know, I try to give them a lesson to let them learn and stuff. And then the coach say, why you didn't shoot? I said, she, she got to know. She got to do something with her head before she come down here. Don't do it in my, don't do it down in my own office. How would you handle that as an association? Would that be the way we want to handle it? Or how would we do it as an association? If you, if you keep, if you have a kid that's doing that, and you see where they're struggling, like I said, stand them up. Stand up, yep, stand up. walk over to them. Young lady, do you need some assistance with your hair? Do you have a rubber band or anything you can tie it over? Ask a kid behind them. Yeah. If somebody has a hairpin or a rubber band, somebody on the, along the fence line, you help them out. Tuck it in your shirt if it's long enough. Tuck it in your jersey, whatever case it may be. Um, and I'll tell you another thing. A of, uh, I know how I told y'all things to have in your bags, right? Your pat pat. Scissors. The official things to have. Well, after years of experience, you start to realize extra stuff you gotta pack. I keep those. I keep things in there like the little tools, the little. Um, Switch blade knives and the hex, the, um, the hex tools. What's called? The, uh, I forgot what's called. Uh, the Allen wrenches. The Allen wrenches. Because of the starting blocks. The screws and the starting blocks are uh, Allen wrench. Use them to tighten it down with. Safety pins, bobby pins, and rubber paper bands, clips. paper clips. I keep all that stuff in bed because scenarios like this. You got a situation where a young lady hair messed up and you can't get it down, no one can help her. I may have a rubber band in my back. I may have a hair. You know, I got to do it, so I go take some of her stuff. So, uh, <laughs> I, I put it in my bag and, and take it to the trash meet with me. You know? That way, it doesn't hold the race up. She doesn't miss the race. We're helping the kid out. And that's called preventive officiating. Yeah, because my question was, if we were noticing them doing that, doing that practice, mm -hmm. and it's a problem you know, while they practice, right. can we prevent that before yes. them exactly. say, hey, why don't you that's get right. that straight? Yeah. Because it's, <clears throat> Keep it from the land. Exactly. That's why you said well, preventive too, officiating. Have, uh, okay. Those meetings with the coaches and stuff. That's something coaches need to clear up with their athletes yes. anyway yes. at the beginning of the meet. Correct. So, exactly. And I try to tell them that too in the, in the coaches' meeting at the very beginning. Yeah. You know, check your athletes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about jury, jury. now anymore. But uh, the girls with extra hair and all this kind of stuff. You know, you get a try meet, the day after the prom, you got a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of problems. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, the, the nails and the hair. Oh, I can't get my hair last night. Oh, I got to the prom. Nails are five inches long. And it's, it, and it's four by one time. And she, oh, my nails. <laughs> so you're going to have those scenarios come on. You know, as, as a coach, I had the same situation. I've had problems like that before. I had a girl in a four by one who just came from the prom, but she still want to keep her nails. And she dropped the baton. I told, oh. I told her mama, when she come back for the finals on Monday, either the nails go or she's go. Yeah. <laughs> Mama was popping nails off in the parking lot that very same day. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, th those things happen. Like um, you were saying, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing where the starter and the timer have to be simultaneous together at yeah. all times. So, like you were saying, if, if someone causing things down here in the box, like me, I use a, I use a radio. I have a radio, the timer has a radio. Mm -hmm. If I say charge the lane one, I say, I, I'll say, Timer, lane one has one. He already knows. If lane one, I go to lane one again, he's gone. I say, lane one is just five. He's gone. That's it. Love. He's gone. I, don't, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun or anything, but in the meantime, we're talking about um, the starter and the, the backup um, starter. What are we doing as officials in the meantime? No. If, uh, here we are. Gone? Okay, here we are. If, say, the field events are done. And all the umpires from the, the field events, the throws and the jumps. So like we um, you had a meet yesterday, you do your field events first and then you're racing after that. Once the field events are done, then as far as you know, giving you an assignment for the running that day for umpiring, right. you'll be placed on, on the track. For the 100 meter dash, you'll stagger, we'll stagger you out along the in interior of the track, all the way down the track here on this side, maybe every 10, 15 meters or so. And what you're basically doing is watching 
the lane. Make sure they start in the lane and they finish in the lane. Straightaway races, the 400 meter dash, things, I mean, the 100 meter dash, those are pretty simple. It gets kind of complicated when you start talking about hurdles in a few minutes. Okay. But then you'll be assigned a flight of hurdles. You stand by a hurdle, um, the first flight of hurdles, you have those eight, then all the way down to 10 hurdles. And you'll have th those volunteers helping you. And what you're making sure is the hurdles at the right height, the right weight, and I'll go there in a few minutes, and that they're not overlapping and touching each other. And then when the race starts, if you're watching the races that they come down, like we had an issue yesterday in, in family relays, kid come down in lane three, he was hitting the hurdle in lane four with his lead leg after the race. That's a disqualification because you went out of your lane. And I'll explain that in a few minutes how that works with the hurdles. But you, as an umpire, as you're stationed down the track with your flags, you'll be watching those things and for the hurdle races, hurdle violations, hooking the trail leg around the hurdle, lead leg going outside the hurdle possibly, um, purposely knocking them down with their hands instead of trying to clear the hurdle naturally like it's supposed to. Those violations come about. And I have a uh, form I pass around for in a few minutes. It has the violations on it. You can see, so you have to write it up on your umpire sheet by rule, so you can dictate what rule it is, what page number is already predetermined in the, on that form. It kind of helps you out a little bit. Um, but those are the things you look for as an umpire for the hurdles. And then when we talk about umpiring for the rest of the races around the track, when I get up there at the top, we'll talk about that. So positioning wise for the umpires, for the straightaway races, you'll be staggered out every 10, 15 minutes or so, straight down, and just watching the lane violations not nine times out of 10 for that. Um, now also, in the, um, as far as the false start goes, um, and it's kind of a judgment call for the starter, um, we wanna make sure that the kids get a clean and fair race on the start. Let's say the start comes out and the block doesn't slip, the pedals is good, but the kid stumbles. For, for some reason, the kid may stumble. You'll see that sometimes. Now that's a judgment call on the starter. Really. If it happens, I say, I've always been told sometimes if it happens within the first maybe uh, five or six steps or five meters or so, and he comes out, if I want to fire that call, fire that gun and give him a recall so he has a fair start, I can do that. There's no rule to say I can't. If I feel that, okay, that kid stumbled, and, you know, and it's just a bad stumble, well, okay, I can fire the gun, have him come back. That's he what gets, he gets 15, fall, right? Yeah. If fall. he gets 15, 20 meters down the track and he falls, then he just out. That's, 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 that's on him. Well, I, but you know, my car, I say, out of the block, the fourth, by the hurdle blue line, we're registering right now. That is about a good five meters or so, four or five meters. Within that distance from the start line, if you stumble and fall, I could probably call that back and talk and bring it back. Anything after that, that's on that kid. I give him opportunity. When we get down on the, on the curve starts, we'll talk about that for the um, distance races. There's a certain distance of the recall that race back if there's any bumping and pushing and someone fall within 100 meters. We'll talk about that later. But for all intents and purposes, for the 100 meter dash, that's pretty much how the start commands go. Any questions on that part so far with the 100? And the placement of the starters and the recall starters and what they look, and what they look for. All right, now with the hurdles, it's the same thing as far as the start is concerned. Now, here's the thing for safety. For safety-wise, you bring these hurdles up. Dude, those short people so need the small one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hurdle heights for different divisions, age groups. This hurdle height here is 30 inches. Now, when we're doing, look at the knot, the holes here. These increments are 30 inches here, 33, 36, 42, 39, and 42. This height right here is for um, if we hit, how many did the middle school yesterday? Anybody did middle school? Yeah. Here's your middle school. This is middle school. High yeah. girls hurdle height. Okay. And there's been some some argument across the state over the years as far as where to put the boys' middle school. Some 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 chapters you have, they'll put them at this height. Some will put them at the girls' high school height at 33 inches. When you get to the state championships down there in um, at IGM, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they're gonna put them at 33 inches. That's what they have them. So make sure we're consistent here in Tallahassee doing what the state does, so the kids in the area get a fair chance of understanding what the height is when they run their early races. All right. Um, I don't think since 1980 whatever, they don't make hurdles like these anymore where you have to shift the weights. But I'm glad we had this type of hurdle so you can see it if we run across these types. Most of them now are welded inside the bar, the base, or they're in there, you can hear them slide, shifting back and forth. 
But these hurdles were made to adjust to accommodate for the height of the hurdle so that when the kid hit it, there's not much resistance so they don't injure themselves for safety purposes. So the numbers on the bottom here correlate to the height of the hurdle. So these numbers are saying 30, 30 36, 33, 36, or, um, 39, and 42, same as the height. So once we put it at that certain height, you shift the weight same thing. to accommodate the height of the hurdle. Okay? This is the girls' middle school. Now, let's see what that should be the. This is girls' high school here, 33 inches. Girls' high school, which we'll all be doing. 33 inches on the girls' high school hurdle. This is their height. This is the boys' high school, 39 inches. Boys' high school, 39 inches on their height. And this is for the 100 meter hurdles I'm talking about, the 100 meter hurdle race right here. All right? 100 meter hurdles, middle school girls, high school girls, high school boys. 110. 110. One to 10 meters. The start line for the boys, 110, will be 10 meters back from the natural. Mm -hmm. On this track here, this is your 100 meter dash, 100 meter hurdles for girls start line. For the 110, 110 meter hurdles for the boys, we go back 10 meters to another start line back here. They have an extra 10 meters to go. Nothing changes but the distance. Okay, on the track markings, um, every track, most of the, the universal coloring system, some tracks don't have it all. But this blue mark you see here, is the first hurdle mark for the boys, boys 110, 110 that starts back there. The girls will start here. The girls always go. Girls go. That's the first hurdle mark where Reggie's standing. From the starting line to the first hurdle, that's 13 meters long. Out of the block to the first hurdle. Okay. So every yellow mark you see there, there's 10, 10 of them all the way down the track. The girls 100 meter hurdles. The boys have 10 also. And then you're going an extra 10 meters down the track on their markings. Now, I want you to understand the middle, when we go to the 300 hurdles on the high school level, 300 meter hurdles, the girls will race at 30 meters, 30, meters, 30 inches high, they go all the way down, and the boys will be at 36, which is the middle hole. 36 inches for the boys, 300 meter hurdles. And that marking on the track, on this track, will be a white marking on this track. Yeah, eight hurdles in that race. We talk about the hurdle race. Eight hurdles in that race, 300 meters around, and 35 meters in between each hurdle. 45 minutes from the start to the first hurdle, 35 in between, and 10 meters out the finish, up that last hurdle. All right. Um, there, most times, depending on how the track laid out, there's three on the straightaway, three on the start, or two on the start, one goes into the curve, and two on the curve there. So we have eight hurdles total in that 300 meters. There are 10 hurdles in the 100 meter and 110 meter races for the hurdle uh, marking community. As far as hurdle uh, violations, we talked about that a few minutes ago. Violations, one, cannot purposely knock the hurdle down with my hand while I'm racing. Hooking the hurdle, we were saying hooking means that foot uh, leg goes around the hurdle as you're racing and not directly over the top of the hurdle. Either one, left or right. My foot comes out like this as I'm leading, my, what we call a lead leg, the first leg. On my body's center position here, my foot goes out there, and my foot contacts this, that's a lane violation because I'm outside of my lane. All right? That, again, is a lane violation. Oh, Looking at the hurdle. It goes over this way. It goes over that way. The knee may, the may, the knee may be over the hurdle, but that foot is on the outside. And a lot of times, you're going to see this on the curve of your 300 hurdles, especially the kids on the inside where their lead leg is their right, and their curve lane is on the inside, that trail leg is going to trail on the outside of the hurdle, not to my time, I guarantee you. Because you've always been taught, your coaches tell your kids how to run the curve at the bottom of the lane. So again, when I run my hurdle here at the bottom of the lane, my little leg's going to be there, my trail leg's going to be the outside of the hurdle. I'm hooking that hurdle. So the kid has to run the center of the lane so that the body stays on top of the hurdle. I was doing that lane violation, a hurdle violation, I should say. Do so, you call that hooking? No matter what, or only if they didn't feed another? No, it's just a desert call. Yeah. They won't impede anybody, but that's a natural call. Yeah. They cannot, because that's an unfair advantage. That's an unfair advantage. That's what it is. That's why they have a judge at every hurdle. Yeah, that's the umpire seat. And your umpires on the, on the hurdles, you'll be stationed along the curve watching for that when you're on the curve. And you'll be facing somewhere where you'll see the curve coming towards you. you get umpire in here, come out of the curve, one in the top, one in the back side. So you're watching from all different directions. When you're Part of the hurdle crew setting the hurdles up, especially for the 110 and 100 hurdles. Make sure when we have hurdles set up, they don't overlap. This is a huge, huge problem we have. And this is going to come back on officials. 
always as officials right here. Um, 2012 state championships and uh, high school championship down in Jacksonville. I'm, I'm coaching the guy, be my boy, two of my boys in the state finals in the hurdles. And they put one, they put the hurdles, the official the hurdles at the wrong markings. There's so many markings on the tracks. You, when you go to these college meets on the college campus, you have thousands of markings on the tracks. They have 80 meter hurdles, 100 meter hurdles, 110s. Uh, markings going both directions of the track. So you have a two gold marks. One may be a line, one may be a diamond going different directions. They're so confusing. And if you got somebody who's not familiar with track and field, well, they tell me to put on the gold mark. That's a gold mark. That's a gold diamond. You put it on the gold line. But well, no one told me. So they have these issues and problems. Well, what happened was they put the hurdles, the wrong markings, the last two hurdles. And my boy clearly cleared his hurdle. But the guy next to him, the hurdle overlapped slightly a bit. He hit his hurdle. My boy hurdle fell, and this is the guy who was finishing first. My boy was finishing first. The kid was in the outside lane next to him. Her first, second, third, and fourth finishers who would have finished that race all fell and hit the ground. Mm. Places five, six, seven, and eight came in one, two, three, four. <laughs> and you, you were there. You remember that year? We were there. Man. TJ had TJ and I and Mo. It was the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my 27 years of coach. I've never seen that before in my life. How can all four top finishers fall and hit the ground? And we were like, that ain't right. So we find out they had to hurt us to up. So when you get to a track as officials, I always tell us to get there an hour, hour and a half early. Especially the track if you don't know that track very well. Walk the track, learn the markings, understand where what goes where if you're the umpire for those sprint hurdle races, understand where the markings are, and see how the hurdles are constructed. A lot of hurdles are made differently here at the top of them. Our hurdles here, fam you, straight up. At Florida State, it's gonna come up about here. Is going to stick out and curve up. So the post is a little different. So the post is here, but the hurdle bar is out here. But when you place a hurdle on the track, the crossbar is what we want to cover the cross, the hash mark. Not the base, not this post. We want to make sure this crossbar is on top of that line. Because that's what they're crossing. Like I said, you may have a post that goes up and it curves back and then come here. So the crossbar sits here and the post sits there. So if you put it on the post, there's about a gap right there. And as a hurdlers, we work on timing. Mm -hmm. We're timing. Mm -hmm. So you mess me up by a centimeter, we're gonna fight. Because mm -hmm. I got my step, I'm on rhythm. You screw me up by this much, 90 meters down the track, that this much has turned to that much mm -hmm. as a hurdler. So you're screwing me up, especially in the 300 meter hurdles. All right, it, it throws, trust me, it's, it's, it's very technical when it comes to us. So make sure that the crossbar covers that line and not the post itself. Again, make sure the hurdles do not overlap. Make sure there's some gap in between every hurdle as you put it down the track so that it doesn't hit each other and knock it down. Um, did I miss anything on the hurdles? Any question on that part? The hurdles? Now once, here's the safety thing. Once the girls race is over, I'm going to remove the hurdles, move them back to the boys' markings. As a starter, recall starter, and anyone else that's down here, our part right here is very important, safety. These kids want to get in their blocks and set them up and give that hurdle as quick as possible to get their practice in because Coach said, give that hurdle and get a practice running. That's not a problem. We'll give it to you, but we'll wait until we clear the track. You stand out here with your red flag, you stand on the track. No starts. You're going to hold the starts until the, the track is clear. While the hurdle crew is setting the hurdles up, up to by at least hurdle three, one, two, and three. Once hurdle two, one, two, and three are set and they're redoing everything else, then you can clear the track and tell them, you give them a command, tell them, hurdle one only or hurdle two only because someone setting hurdles up down the track may not see them flying down now you got to crash someone getting hurt someone get ran on top of it happens all the time somebody walking back and forth across the lane and they don't see their kid coming through guess what i got a size 12 coming at you with 12 spikes at the bottom i'm gonna catch you right in the face safety somebody come across and catch a foot in the face or that spike cut them up so make sure that you're having um, that safety check before you clear the track and get that practice started and you let them know, hurdle one only, hurdle two only, one start, whatever the case may be, whatever you tell them, give them that, and let them come on back, and then give you the start command. But that's really important when, uh, when it comes to hurdles, that's safety. Uh, all hurdles, there would be positions so that there would be a space between there? Here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're never wider than the lane. They're never wider than the lane. And they're plastic, they're not like the wood ones that me and Reggie's trying back in the day. Really. We go home and pick, pick splinters out my hamstrings. <laughs> but that, those are the ones, uh, yeah, they're, not, they're never wider than light, so we're good as far as the width of the hurdles. That's, that's not a problem. But other than that, that's pretty much covers 
everything on this end for the 100 meter dash, 100 meter hurdles, uh, 110 hurdles set up. Um, again, like I said, safety check. Check the hurdles. As you're checking as the umpires, when you're putting the hurdles on the track, make sure the hurdles are clicking. You're going to have them overlap. We had a bunch of them like this yesterday because they were they're just old and they're hard to move. Yeah, sitting like this, you can tell uneven. You know, make sure that you get that click, everything's level across, that they have the right height, the right weight. And now, time I tell you, once you get ready as a starter, what I know I'm gonna do is, once I, before I start the race, I get down and do this. I look down all the track, make sure everything is the same height. Just check the hurdles. I, I can see the spot of hurdles in lane seven, 10 yards down the hole. Left, that hurdle lane, one miss, and one's off balance. Just make sure. Kid hits a hurdle in lane four, mm -hmm. he's by himself, winning the race, nobody's there. But he ends up, hit the hurdle, and the hurdle throws him in lane two. Is he disqualified or not? No. He's not as long as he's not interfering with nobody else, Correct. He's, he's fine. If he's interfered with somebody else, he's just cute. That would happen to a kid yesterday, he broke his arm. What? Florida Hockey. He was winning the race. You was, you was there? No. You, okay. you were there, wasn't you? I was there for a while and then I went Yeah, out. the kid was in lane four from uh, Fairview, went in the hurdles clearly. Hit the hit the last hurdle, failed, half on, came down like this, Oof. put his arm in two places. Mm. He just had surgery uh, last night to hmm. repair his arm. And uh, he won the race. I was gonna say that he finished. Yeah, he oh, finished. Okay. He got up, he hit <laughs> and broke his <laughs> arm and rolled. But nobody was close to him. He got up and finished the race. Okay. Well, along that same scenario, I'm give my situation rolling. for you is that when you have hurdles, you got a lot of issues coming up, problems like that. Look, he's just one kid. You got several kids in the race, and let's say I'm here. Let me get this together. They got a third person here in this lane. I'm in the center track, and for whatever reasons, it's not after his fault, but it was overlapped. And I hit this hurdle, right? and it caused this kid to fall. Yep. Okay. It caused this kid to fall, and the umpire noticed it. As it happens, the hurdle overlapped. It wasn't. It, it wasn't intentionally done. Though. There was no DQ in that because it wasn't maliciously done. It wasn't done on purpose. Okay. So there's no disqualification there. Here's another scenario. Let's say I hit my hurdle. Bam! I'm gonna step ahead of this kid. I hit my hurdle and I fall and I stumble and I fall over into his lane. And I force him out of his lane. And I force him maybe off the track. And this kid gets back up and finishes the race. And this kid try to get back up and finish the race. My prize get together. What's gonna be the call? That was gonna be disqualified. I will be DQ. Mm -hmm. He actually got up and attempted to finish the race. So the timer we don't have to give him, but did not finish. He's not disqualified. And if it's a, uh, a prelim, semifinals where they're going to advance, if there's, a, if there's an open lane, if there's a space in the again. finals, he can advance and give him the opportunity. Now, we had this issue a few years back. His boy went through that. A kid from Garby did that exact same thing, knocked his boy off the track. His kid got up and finished the race. Garby kid didn't. The coaches wanted to protest and say, well, let's put him in the finals, let him run, give him a chance to run again. By rule, you shouldn't do that. You cannot protest if it's not protestable. And a kid that caused the violation cannot be given an opportunity. But they gave it to him anyway. Now, as a starter, I sat back and watched. I was a starter that day. I wasn't there. And the funny thing is, your mom's my recall, but he can't. He saw that. As soon as it happened, he said, Cause what happened? Said, What's going to need to happen? And I explained it to him, like I'm telling you now. Your kid can go to the finals. The other boy should not. But that boy, coach, protested it, and they gave him a chance to go into the finals, which is by rule he should not have. So understand those, what can and cannot be protesting. That was a judgment call, but honestly, that kid, that he forced that boy off the track. He should not be given a chance to go to the finals. And you're gonna get a lot of scenarios with hurdles. Hurdles being hit and knocked over. Yesterday we had a problem, family relays. Kid hit the hurdle, and it, I guess the weight was wrong, because the hurdle flew up in the air, and it went into the next lane. Oof. Called that kid to run off the track. Well, that kid that got was forced off the track, we put him in the finals. Usually if the hurdle's in the right way and everything goes well, you hit the hurdle, it's going, going to do this number right here. Come right just like that. That's back. what it's going to do. If it's in the that wrong way, yeah. it's going to stay down. But then that means that his should stay down. Yeah. It'll your, stay down. Your, no, yours. Yeah, it'll stay down. But, it'll stay down. But if I'm coming at it, let's say, and this he, up, and let's he, say. And he do it like this? No, it, no, no, I was saying his is at the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, now oh, let's oh. say, this, the height is 42, right? That's, that's I'm, at, I'm at 42. 
But the weight is at 36, right, 33. I'm a man. My legs, I'm squatting 300 pounds plus in the weight room. When I come hit this, it's going to be a dog on toothpick. By the time I hit it, it's going to flop in the air like a piece of paper. It's going to fly with it because the weight is not countering the height. So now, safety is an issue right now. So when I hit this bad boy, it's going to fly. Left, right, so up in the air, someone's going to get hit. So we have to get Check the safety for the height and the weight of the hurdle so that we don't have that issue with the Because the weight's supposed to be, so when you do hit the hurdle, it will stay down based on the height. And these are plastic and they will break. They yeah. will snap right in two. Yeah. If you went in the hurdles and you see you're in first place and you're down and you're about to second to the last hurdle, mm -hmm. you hit the hurdle, you fall, and you roll out of your lane. You can get back up and finish the race? No, you're not impeding anyone else. As long as you're not, mm -hmm. you made an honest attempt to get back in your lane and finish your race. Now, lane races, you have to finish in the lane you start. You can't be in lane four and finish in lane three. That's what it's going to You have to finish in the lane that you start. All right, real quick, let's take it down to the curve start, then we go to the four book. You know exactly what page number they tell you, exactly what page number to look for in the high school rule book. So when you go to your um, violation forms, and you fill out your form, and they ask you what rule was it, that they violated, what was the issue in the description. You look to that description right here, you write down rule 5.14.2c, hook in the hurdles. Um, you got running violations in here and the miscellaneous stuff as well. On the effort, on the effort is like what I just said a few minutes ago. You fall, you fell down because of whatever issue, you need to make an honest attempt to finish the race. Things of that nature. It's a, lot, it's, it's a good sheet. And this is, um, it's, one, two, three, it's three, you can cut it in half. It's three, three pieces, the same thing, written. But um, I can make copies for everybody if you want to have that. You do. For, so you, and the, um, your umpire violation forms, cards. I have some written up with the Ford High School Association logo written on it. It's already been approved. They said we can do that. That's no problem. So that if you do have to write a kid up with any issues or problems, you have the form. We have our cheat sheet. You know where the rule came from. So we're about fumbling through the book to find the rule. And most of them are pretty much straightforward as far as the rules are concerned. The violation forms is that um, at every meet, I mean, someone brings that or we no, respond to it? Yeah, yeah, I have them right here. Yeah. It's our responsibility to bring them. Um, again, here's the one for USTF, but it's basically the same thing. And I have a little diagram of the track. Sometimes they ask me where did the violation oh, occur. Her. So you have to let you know where, what position in the track, where did it occur, and what time it happened, and things of that nature. Right. <clears throat> so, on the curve start. And it'll get a little tricky out here. This is where you want to come out to the tracks early, especially tracks you are not very familiar with. And walk the tracks and see the markings, because every marking and every track is different. I took it upon myself about three years ago, family in four states, because I do a lot of meetings between the two of them. I made a card. I should have got cooked up and got my card yesterday. I made a card with all the track markings, start line markings, relay zone. Um, relay zone markers and everything so we'll know I give them to the finish line judges and the recall so we'll have them so we got a four by two four by eight or whatever the case may be we'll know what color what lane and how to start the kids where to put them at and where to finish them at on this track um, basic race first on this track over here will be 400 meter dash you walk out in the track this track is going to say 400 you see 400 written on it you have the, the distance is written on it so a lot of the high school tracks you go to Florida high you'll see the high school track where it says one TR, two TR, I mean the two turns, one TS. One turn stagger, two turn stagger. And what, it's basically saying the same thing here, they just put a different terminology. So one turn stagger means that you're more likely to be dealing with 800 meters. One turn is means you're gonna run the curve one time and they'll merge to lane one and finish the track, I mean finish the race. If that two turn stagger, you're talking about the 400, which means you're going to run the first curve and then the second curve. You stay, it's a lane race. You finish, you start and finish in your lane. You're running two turns. A three turn stagger, it's probably your relays. You're four by four. Uh, maybe that's sprint melee where you ran the uh, 2248 two, two, every day yesterday. So you run three turns. Two, two, four, eight. One curve, the second curve, then third leg kick, run another curve, and then merge on the back side. So you got three curves, you got three turns. One, two, and then the third one and then merge to the back side. So you have a one turn, a two turn, and a three turn stagger. And then we did take nine times to 10 your different races. Um, the sprint medals are ran two different ways. You got a one, one, two, four, or a two, two, four, eight. So understanding those relays and what distances each kid's gonna run, where they take your start, 
start line and your um, exchange zones. Okay. In the 400 meters, the solid white line, all the way down. On your stagger, and then when I say stagger, this shin is right here. Reggie's here, lane three. You got four right there. So this is my start line. That's, that's the start line. So this is what we call a stagger start. Okay. Now, for those who are not too familiar with track, it's not an advantage because of the stagger. Because the wider you go, the circumference of the track, the way you know what you keep you are all going to run the same distance every time you come up that back curve. Everything's going to equal up and finish the same distance. No matter if you're lane one or lane eight, it's all going to be the same distance wise. Okay? Now, now the question. Yes. Now, now the 400 is marked there. Lane, lane one will always be the same. Lane one will always be the same. I'm not sure about that. I, yeah, lane one still starts there. Lane one always there. But only one, one lane is marked. Yeah, most times it's only one lane mark, but it's going to give you color indication. Okay. So you'll see, it's say, 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 say we're running the 400 meter dash. Right. All right, and you're not familiar with the track. Just look on the track and find where it says 400. It's 400. Right there, the white line. White solid line. white. So every solid white line of That's every lane will be for the 400. Gotcha. If we're running the, the, the 800 meter run, I'm going to look on the track and find 800 meters. 800 meters is going to be black, black and, and white. Black. So it's a black line or black and white. So I'm going to find black and white in every, in every lane. I'm gonna find, that's gonna be my start line. That's the relay in it. It's relay. 800. 800, yeah. yeah. Green and white. Green and white. It's gonna be green and white. 800, yeah. 4 by 2. That's 800 meter run. Green and white. white. So you have. Green and white. Look at that distance on the track. Mm -hmm. Then that color of that line, it will tell you which lane or which start line it's gonna be. Okay, the R is for the relay. R is for relay. R for the regular. Okay. Regular, yeah. 200 meters. Now you can run 200 meters from two different distances. Yep. All right. You can run it here and finish on the back side, or start from there and finish here. All right. In the summertime, you do a lot of AU meets. You have about 300 heats of the 200. <laughs> you will see what they run a double race. What I mean by double is they have a group of 200 here and a group of 200 over there, and they will start both of them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And one will finish there, one will finish here. Mm -hmm. They did that Friday at Bowls too. They did. Yes, they did. Yes, the similar, uh, the 400 meter dash. They didn't have yes. electronic timing, did they? Yes, they did. Yes. Wow. Yeah, they have a camera set up on both ends. They have a system. They have a camera, double system. Dual system. Yeah. Now even the 400 meter dash, like she just said, in Bowles in Jacksonville, 400 meter dash same, done the same type way. You start the first heat at 400. When that heat gets around about top of the curve. The, the second he's already on the track, they are gonna find the next one. So they're running now and they're finishing. So you got two races on the track, so two different heats at the same time. Just like that. But they're getting them knocked out. Mm -hmm. But you gotta have good crew to do that. It's fast, it's quick, it's very efficient. If you gotta start, if you got a good car to start and a good timer, it'll work. You did great. I've done it before. It works. It's not hectic at all. You gotta, you gotta have a crew. You gotta have a crew. Now start commands. The same for the lane races of the sprints. Using the starting block, same thing. Same as um, same the 100 meter dash and the, the, the hurdles. They're using the starting blocks for the 400 meter dash here, or the 200 meter dash, or a sprint relay. They're using the uh, blocks for sprint relays. They stack the starts, make sure that they get the block starts, the block don't slip, and still for the same thing. With the, uh, okay, everybody here on the grass. Now, one man crew, you're the only starter. You're the only starter, and we got no people. I'm gonna use y'all as athletes for a few minutes. <laughs> you're the only starter, and you have a staggered start, 400 meters or whatever the case may be. Here's a trick to it. You have to position yourself to see all eight lanes. Okay, so now, let's okay. go 400 meters. 400 meters, and I got all eight lanes loaded. All eight lanes are loaded. You have to be to the outside on the grass, top of the curve, so that you can see from lane oh, eight down to lane yeah. one. Now, go, go outside. Top of the over the back, right side number eight. Now, that. that's where you're gonna be, if you're a one-man starter for the 400 meter dash, because now you're gonna see eight all the way down to one. Now, here's the trick. This is where you have to be very vocal in what you're saying. So where, now, where, where you're standing right now, go back. I guarantee you where he's standing now, he cannot see lane one. You cannot see lane one because you got a cameraman sitting here. You got mama with her cell phone with a video of her baby sitting right there. <laughs> and then you got somebody working the field of it right behind you at the long jump pit. He's got he's on his cell phone with a rake on his shoulder. He's not paying attention. So as a starter, you got to tell them, move back, clear out. You have to tell them that. This is your job. Tell them to clear out, back out of the way to start. You have to have clear line of sight between lane eight and lane one. 
anything obscuring your view, you got to back them out of it. That's what you got to do. And I've told them that before. And they uh, have to be able to hear it though. Yeah. Ain't got to be able to, yeah. They, don't have my if, you don't have a, if you don't have a microphone system, you got it before the start of the race, you do a check. Lane one, one can you hear me? me? <laughs> Lane one, you got to be able to hear you. You got a loud cloud, cloud noise, it's real picky, it's real noisy. Is that what a whistle would do? Could you use a whistle you, to do what? Get the attention? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything, yeah. 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 I mean, I took my gun and, and fired a gun one time. And I didn't start, I said, bam, I got your attention, huh? Get the hell out of the way. Back, <laughs> Back it up. So, uh, I did a child's one year. I remember a child's. And he, he just standing all around. So, okay, all right. Bam! The race didn't start. Back up out of the way. So, whatever it takes to get their attention. You gotta have clear line of sight when you're the only starter. Okay? And uh, 200 meters, if you're 200 meter dash, same position when you're the only person. Two man crew, two man crew on the stagger start a lot easier. We're gonna split the track in half. Mm -hmm. If he, he's the head starter, what about what lane four is? He can be to the inside. Right there. Get to the inside. Yeah, right put your hair on and she was fine. Four, <laughs> down to lane one. The recall starter, just across from his face. This side of lane four, I'm gonna look at lane five through eight. So when he's gonna give the call, on your mark. Set, fire the gun. I'm looking five through eight. Once he makes the call, on your mark, he's checking lane four down, I'm looking five up. When my four people are ready, I give him my hand signal. Set. Then when his four people are ready, he'll fire the gun. If my, anybody here, false start on my end, I shoot my gun, bring him back. If you see a false start on his half of the track, he'll fire it, we'll bring it back, and start it over. Same communication happens, it's down there. There's a false start, we come together, what did you see? I may have shoot it, it to his back, he didn't see it. Um, I got lane seven, my lane seven fall started, just bring it back. Or, or he may shoot the gun too soon, let's say it happened, if the kid's down there too long. Got a little prima down down here, lane two, take a forever, and start it on see it. So he's down there forever, all of a sudden, just before he says set, the hand goes up. Athlete's gonna raise their hand as a starter. If an athlete raises their hand, that means they need to be reset. If the issue is a problem, he may be uncomfortable, nervous. He felt that he may be down there too long. It's freezing cold. I'm tired. What the hell? Taking so long to shoot the gun. <laughs> so we're gonna bring him on up. So let's say that the kid raised their hand. He's back to him. He didn't never see it, and he fired the gun. Bam! Well, I gotta fire my gun as a recall to bring him back. All I'm gonna do is say, Hey, Bane Seven wasn't ready. Let's recall the race and give him a chance to get set. Not just communicate. That's all we do. That's all we do. Communicate between the two. That's all it is. So you make sure that, now if you're the only starter, you gotta do a, a full, what's called full system check. Come up at the top of the track, that's on your mark, set, look at lane eight, down to one, back to eight. And it's gonna take a good point, 1.5 to two seconds to do that. A quick check down and back before I fire the gun, bam. Because something may happen, if I'm just only looking at, on your mark, set, look down, eight one two. ready. Lane 8 may raise his hand, I may not see it. So do, do, do it. It's like when you drive, looking both ways two or three times before you cross the street. When you drive. Just do that check a couple times real fast. Just scan the track left to right before you fire that gun. Make sure everyone's set, everyone's up in position, no one's moving, no one's flinching, and everyone can hear your voice. And there's no delay. Now, stagger start, there's a delay situation happening. You're so far out and you say uh, set. And fired a gun, and that kid never, in lane one, never came up in the same position. He stands up like, I didn't hear him, I didn't hear him. Now, what do you do? Now, you have a choice. You can recall the race, or you can just walk away, let the race go, and put the blame on the kid. Right, preventive officiating says, fair start, start the race over, mm -hmm. make sure the kid can hear you. Make sure the kid can hear you. All right? Now, the next thing is, hand signal, I go hand signal. Now, what I've done sometimes, if I've got a recall guy that's back there, I'll come to him and say, when I say set, let them know from lane one or two, he said set. Yeah, but they're delayed. Yeah. They repeat what you said. Yeah, they'll just repeat what I say. I'll say set, he says set, so they can come up. And then they'll, 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 they'll know and stuff like that. Now, with that hand signal, I didn't cover it down there, I'm gonna do it here because it's more important than this in the track. Hand signals as a starter. Uh, some people still use them. Depending on which level of trap mix you're working, you don't use them. College trap mix, you don't use hand signals because you get a mic in. Most times, other times, USA, they use hand signals. 
high school they do a little bit here and there sometimes me personally i don't use them at all only on the one scenario if i got a kid that's deaf at the coaches meeting when, you, when the coaches come together for a three o'clock track meeting you come together at 2 30. most times the meet there right there the, 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 the person running the track meet they'll bring over the starter so you can give our, we can give our instructions to the coaches my one of my first questions is any kid, anybody have a kid that's hearing impaired i'm going to ask that question Anybody have a hearing impaired kid? Because um, the last few years we hosted the 1A region at Florida High. And there's always a team, I forgot, that the Florida Deaf team. They mm -hmm. have girls that's deaf. So that's the time I would use my hand signaling when I know I got a deaf kid in that race. Otherwise, I'm not going to. Um, because one, one, I use my microphone. Right? Uh, so you're saying because you've got one hand on the microphone and the other on the gun, you're not going to do it? Correct. Yeah. I had a kid just Saturday. His coach came to me and said, uh, Mr. Starter, it was his son that was running. He couldn't hardly see. So I had to position myself, so he ran the, uh, the 800. So what I did, he was up in the lane, he didn't kind of, so I said, time it. This kid can't see, so we put him in lane one. They were using two through eight. So we put him in lane one. So I, I was be able to stand right here where he could see me. I said, can you see me? And he said, like that. So I stayed there to that point. They did a two-man start. We did it. He ran well. He did fine. On your, on your hand signal. The gun is up here. On your mark. Oh, I'm here. And I say set, the hand's going to come up. What I'm telling the kid that's deaf is, this means getting your block, get stands the way. They may use a block. They may use a standing stance. Whatever they decide to do. When my hand comes up, that tells them to raise up in set position. Hold it up firmly, relax, and then fire the gun. And make sure both hands are up when you fire the gun. Don't drop the gun as you fire, or don't drop the arm as you fire. Okay, can you confuse the kid? Keep my arms up, nice and tall, fire the gun, then the race goes off. You can host the gun. Sorry. Now he's a deaf kid, right? Yes. So how do you hear the gun? See the pop, pop. Flash the, the gun. Flash the gun or the smoke. All right. Because there'll be someone there telling hey, him I'm commands. Yeah. Now you have, you have, you have a person like that's giving him command. They'll, they'll, they'll tell him coach. the command. The they'll hands. watch us, but then at the same time they may watch their coach. Because mm -hmm. sometimes those coaches aren't used to starters that know the hand signal, so they'll be out there next to the starter. They give their kids command. Sometimes I see someone just do a clap, or they get some type of some type of hand signaling. How many y'all watch football? We got hand signal calls. You know, we got we, we got hand signal. We're in the sideline. Kid can't get on the backside of the field. We got hand signals. Same thing. But all intents and purposes, by rule, as starters, we use our, our signals so that we're sure that we're using the correct commands. Along with our voice, we use hand signals as well for the um, starter commands. So you said on your mark. In front. Down in front. Mm -hmm. Set. Set. Yeah, I've seen it from here. On the side. You know, a long time ago, back old school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Take your mark. <laughs> Yes. Gilmore got his basketball he, he, skills he, he, going he, he, on. I had to talk about that in practice one day. I'm like, but we didn't do all that. No. It was different. So now it's in the front. Yeah, it's always here. Then up, set. Yeah, set. Yeah. And it also helps if you're, we're here. Let's say we're going to at the 200, and everyone's on this side. The old school, you always use the hand signal because yeah. we didn't have the timing system back in the day. Everybody mm -hmm. was doing some yeah. top watch. So you can't really tell, is he saying set? Is he, is he calling the command yet? You don't know. But if you use that hand signal, you'll know. Yeah. All right, set. Get ready. Then the gun goes off, bam. Because you sit around talking, one in your mouth, like old oh, Black and Red, we sit around talking and stuff <laughs> back in the day. Black and Red. And you missed that command because the starter's going to sit here. And mark, set, bam. Yeah. Oh, I missed the spot. Did you get it? But if he's using the hand signals, you'll know exactly before he says set. You see the hand go up, so you know that's set. So now I'm going to get ready to hit my clock when the gun goes off. That's another way. And then it's parents and coaches who's timing their kids, they'll know exactly when the gun goes off as well. So there's different ways. To, um, that those things work and help. Um, on the on the open races with no blocks, we have 800, 32, the mile, 1600. We have several start lines we're going to use. We have a waterfall line and a one turn stagger line. On the waterfall, This is your waterfall line here, this curved line. And at the very tip, you'll see the distance is written over there. 1,632. And the 10K. Uh, we ran that 10K yesterday morning at 7.30 in the morning. I wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> I couldn't feel my pencil right in the dog and laying out. 
but you got 10K over there. Now, the start commands as a starter. Once you bring them up, you line them up, you'll give them the, the start commands. You tell them, okay, everyone in their lane? Now, start, uh, athletes. Your start line is gonna be the waterfall line. When you walk up to the start line, take two steps back for me off the line and wait for my first command. So everyone's gonna come up in total line. You tell them to come up in total line. So you got kids lined up all the way across the track. Once they total line over here, tell them to take two steps back and wait for my first command. On the first command, you come up to the line, hold your position until the gun fires. Once the gun fires, the race will start. Once you cross the starting line, you are allowed to break to lane one carefully. If by chance you break to lane one and someone falls, you hear a gun fire within the first 100 meters, which means from here before the break on the back side curve. Within the first 100 meters, if you hear a gun fire, that means you need to stop and come back. We'll start the race over. That's that start rule we talked about, someone stumbling out of a starting block. In the distance races, we give them 100 meters before we fire the gun. And if there's a problem, someone stumbling and fall. Now, if they fell on their own accord, you don't have to bring them back. You don't have to bring them back. They fall on their own, it's a judgment call. If they fell on their own. A shoe or laces untied, or you just lazy, don't want to run. Then, hey, that's your fault. But if they, you know, these kids are here, and they're just in full position, they bump into each other, and I knock him down, and he falls within 100 yards going on the curve, fire it, bring it back. It's your call. It's, it's a judgment call. It's you. Now, a starter. Right about where my speaker stands is there. That's a good place to be for the waterfall start. Head starter will be there. The recall starter is going to be positioned up where Reggie was, right around lane eight, and on the grass out there, watching for that first 100 meters. Okay, so the recall starter for a distance racer will place himself that up there on this curve. If we're doing the 1500, uh, USATF, uh, college meets, that 1500 starts on the back straight away there at the 300 meter mark. Then your recall starter going to position himself about 50 meters down the track away, still watching for that first 100 meters. And then when it falls down there, he'll be the one to fire that gun and bring him back. So here on the curve, on the top, head starter will be here, recall will be up near the top of the curve. Watching the kids come towards him and away from him in that curve. If there's a fall, they'll fire the gun and bring him back. Got it? The start command for a race with no starting blocks. Race with no starting blocks. On your mark, fire the gun. It's not runner set. It's not set. It's not take your mark. It's the same as on your mark set. All we're doing is taking away the set part because they don't have a starting block. So it's on your mark. You pause, because they're going to come into line. Once everyone is still, no one, they're not rocking and moving. The next thing is, they cannot put their hand, and the kids doing this, and all of a sudden they do this, they try to catch themselves, stand up. They cannot make contact with the ground with their hands. They have to be up on their feet, perfectly balanced. They're, they're trying to fight for position. When they come to line, hold them for a second, make sure everyone is standing still, then you fire the gun. So again, the command is on your mark and fire the gun. Same as a block start. You don't say run or set at all. Take away the set part. Set does not come in when you, when you don't have a block. All right, you, now. Do you have many disqualifications with the waterfall? Not at not. all. I mean, I won't, say not, no, I won't say not at all, but Harley, you should never have them. You should never, <laughs> the only thing you're going to have is someone maybe touch the ground because they lost their balance or they bump it from position. Into position Don't from the elbows. And the staggered start, okay. I had a question now, I'm all right. What's the amount, what's the total amount of kids, so adults you can have in the lane? You know, back two. you know, there's two on it. You can so have more than that, it depends. Yeah, that's, that's, that was the question. It depends. Uh, now, if got, it's a big deep race, like 15, 20, that we gonna run. But what's the most they can track? run in the distance? You check your rule books, they're gonna depend. The rule books will tell you how to line them up and how to put them in there, oh, right. but based on numbers. Yeah. All right, now you gotta, 27 kids, whatever. The best thing to do is break them off to a second. A second yeah. right. Break them off to a second. That way they're not overcluttering each other. Yeah. And there's no in injuries happen. Once you get, you got eight lanes. Anything past 16, split them. Yeah. Into another heat. You put them in two all the way up to. No, let's, let's take this dude. Best thing is split them into another heat. All right. All right. The staggered lane starts, no block, which is 800, or even the 16. You can do a 16 and stagger as well. 800, same way. Same start commands. Athletes, we line them up across here. Athletes, your start line will be the green and white line in your lane. 
Walk up to the green and white line in your lane. Take two steps back for me and wait for my first command. So everybody walk up to the green and white. That's it. Take two steps back and wait for the first command. On your mark. And fire the gun. Now you'll get this. On your mark. Come up. Then the gun goes up. That's a false start. That is a false start. They cross that line, they touch the ground. Technically, they're out. What is the purpose of walking to the line and then turning back, safe. walking back two steps and then going back to the line? Identify the line so you know where your start line is. So we can see as a starter, everyone is at the correct. You see all these lines out here? Correct. So make sure you're at the correct start line so when they're stepping back, before the gun goes off, I'm going to do a lane check for the starter. I'm going to make sure he's at the green and white and not the blue and white. Okay. He's not at the, the black and white. It went, and I can see that stagger perfectly all the way across the track. And they're at the correct start line. All right? So the purpose is for you, not for them. But, but actually, it's both. both. Yeah. Yeah. You want to give them time to get set and get ready. Exactly. Because if you tell them to come to the line and they're not ready, and he shoot the gun, somebody say, hey, I'm not ready. And then it's, then it's up to the start to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to call this race back. Because he wasn't ready. Because somebody you may say, hey, I was not ready, um, starter. No, I, 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 I no, what, what I was it, saying was, what I, I thought you saying. Because, you know, some kids space out real quick. Their attention yeah. span is quick. So that's a way to get their attention to make sure okay. that they're I, I ready. I'll put a better perspective for you. Help you out with that question. I'm colorblind. Okay. Legally, I'm colorblind. So I don't know if that's blue or green. You tell me to go to the green and white line, but I'm going to end up going to the blue and white line. I can't see that blue. I'm thinking it's you green and white. Go back to so the green. What, right before I fired a gun, everybody's got to the line and moved back. So I realized that, hey, lane two, your stack is not the same as the rest of when you exactly. further up. So I'm going to check, oh, you hit the wrong line. Lane two, back up, you hit the wrong line. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's, that's, that's for me checking to make sure you hit the strike, the, uh, the correct line, and the kid at the correct line. They outside everybody. Okay. Yeah, that's how it works for that. Again, on your mark, fire the gun when there's no blocks at all. Like, that's the command to use when you, when you are using no blocks. 1600 meters can be staggered as well if you have a big group. Again, you got eight lanes, you got 16 to 18 kids, and you double the lanes up. You can, instead of waterfalling, you can do a one turn stagger. Mm -hmm. And make sure your cones are set up on the backside. You, you, give them the cur you give them the correct command so they'll know not to break when the gun goes off. You tell them stay in your lane 100 meters, and then you break on the backside for the, for the 1600. You can do that. All right? Now, Collegiate and USATF, and I'm surprised family don't have it. Look at that. That, that, that waterfall is outside. Oh. No, that's, that's, that's on the big track. Yeah. That's yeah. on the big monster track. Yeah, the waterfall over there in the area. Yeah. You won't. I'm surprised. I don't have it. And what I'm talking about is, um, let's say you have a huge, huge group in the 3200 or even a 1600. I'm talking 27 people. And you want to just run one big group and get them out of there. I can split them up where we're putting you. lanes one through four. On the waterfall line, lanes one through four on the waterfall, and nine times out of ten, this will be your fast group. It's that fast, the faster times here, and then the other group will be up here, lanes five on another waterfall line. It'll start right here off this, and you'll break over there. And waterfall here, so you waterfall them back there and back here. This group has to stay in their lane until they cross and break. This group can break off the start there, so that makes it even and balanced yes. on the distance. Yeah. There's no, there's no unfair advantage to say that if you're trying to break the groups up because there's so many, you get too, too, too cluttered up in there. So that's how that works with the double waterfall. Now, if you, ever, if you come to FSU Relays in a few weeks, you'll see it happen over there. They have the, we have the double waterfall markings and it works out pretty good. And how, it, how you stagger it and how it's picked up, don't figure it out. The time will do it. There's a system, they figure it out, they'll tell us, they'll reseed it, they'll send down the rest. Line them up. They don't want to worry about trying to figure out well, who goes where. That's not our job. The timer does it. They'll figure it out. That's one less thing we get to worry about. All right. Some of the stuff that sometimes we, as officials and starters, we, we tend to take on more than what we're supposed to. It helps out sometimes. It helps to meet out. But a lot of times, it's not our responsibility. Let them do their job. Be done with it. Um, positioning of yourself when you come down to the, the last biggest one is the four by four. Biggest four by four, this huge stagger. Stagger sometimes will be all the way around the half around the track. If you're the only starter and you're by yourself, four by four, 
Ideally, you don't want to go way up there because the land will never engage you. The best place to stay is somewhere in the hydro map. Especially if you got a speaker system. Somewhere in the center of the hydro map. See there? I, I don't care how big Reggie Mouth is, I would never hear him. He's too far away. That's, that's the last mountain line, eight. See how stagger that is? That's a huge stagger for the 4x4, but it, it gets that big. depending on how the tracks are laid out. Wide curves or tight curves, it gets that wide. He'll ne he'll, that kid will never hear you. So what you have to do is get the set position somewhere near the high jump mat and get back far enough so when you give him start commands, your head is on the swivel. You give him your calls, you give him commands, he's still looking back and forth, you're checking, you're checking, you're checking. If you don't have a microphone system, they can hear you. All right? But if you have a track where they got a PA system and they're making those calls all day, See if you can borrow that mic real fast on the track if they got a recorder's mic and get it down on the track and make that call. Because before I bought that, I did, I did that for the thing one night. I was doing the FSU my, uh, me over there. Four by four stack is so wide, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. All right? So make sure that you're the only guy, only person, the starter, get there center-wise and then make that call back and forth. If you have to use um, another official nearby as your recall, if they don't even have the gun, it doesn't matter. They help with the hand signaling so that they can see half the track to help you out to get that race going, then do that. Grab another umpire or someone from the time and 10 to help signal down to lane one to let them know where you are. All right. Again, I think pretty much covered it. I don't want to be too long. Long because I got to get to this pole vault, but I think that's about it on this end. Um, again. Maybe they need to see the break. Oh, uh, if you want to see the brake lines? Brake lines, right there with the orange poles. You see that orange pole there? You see that orange track line pole? It's a long line. Right on the ground, you see that line on the ground there? There's a line on the ground. Every track is different. Some, that one's kind of straight. You'll see more curve more like curve. that waterfall line there behind you. you see some more of a curve bit. And what? A lot of tracks, if they I didn't don't have poles like they that, have they have cones. Yeah. They have I didn't bring any cones. Baby, let me borrow your bottle. Let me borrow your bottle. They have what cones. you want to do is, on your brake line, when you set the cones up, this is one of those questions they have on your, on your test when you take a test for USA Track and Field. How to place cones on the track for the brake line. On the lane lines, right across, when they cross the brake line there, the lanes come across. Let me use this line back here, this is much better. And here's my waterfall line. If this is my brake line over there, I want to put it here when it comes across. Got it? There, it'll be a straight line going across. That way the kids will know when I get to that line, I don't want to have it on the track, mm -hmm. in the lane, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Here on the lane line, that lane line is coming across. So if you cross here, if I use that, there, you want a cone there, a cone mm -hmm. there, all the way across. So as soon they, the they come through the cones, I can merge down to lane one for your brake lines. And right? you have a judge over there. You gotta have a judge over there to flag it because if an athlete steps, let's say I'm, I'm going this way, that's my lane line, before I get there, I start breaking. That's a lane violation. That's a lane violation. I broke before. It might be a step or two. It might be a centimeter, but still, that's the violation. They broke before they crossed the brake line. So you gotta have somebody over there waving that flag. What if one step are over and one step not? You know, like this. Mm -hmm. You staggered it. Mm -hmm. Body not crossing over. Body got to be all the way. Gotta over. be through. Kind of go back to the your, your, your relay zones for relay exchanges. It was also a question. Oh. But you don't have curves. You don't have a curve? You don't have a curve. You're talking about the oh, on the inside curve? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, what's the question? It, well, that, that was a test question. Yeah, it was a test question, yeah. No, I'm saying this was a test question. If you was on a track that didn't have curves, Correct. Uh -huh. how do you place the cones? Right, how do you place the cones? You see this curve here? This metal curve? If this curve wasn't there, just like I said about the brake line, you take those cones on top of the lane line, this paint line, mm -hmm. and you stagger them out. All the way across on the line. You don't want it inside the track. You don't want it outside over outside the, the track. You want it exactly on top. It's like these rails on top. These rails are basically your cone. You want it on top of that lane line. All the way around the curve. Right. If someone violates the um, lane on the curve, and you, if it's a violation and you hold up the flag, are you to write their number down and they keep running the race? How do you, you continue the race. They'll continue the race. Mm -hmm. You report that violation to the starter or the head official, the, the referee. You report it to that person and let them know there's a lane violation or there's a great lane violation by the team, the team number, the color. All right. Uh, next year it's going to be kind of hard to identify numbers because there won't be any jersey numbers in high school kids. But 
You can see where that kid. If they have a hip number, you can check that out as well. All right, find out the name, the color of that school, and we can try to identify the best you can. And uh, let the uh, head official know, and uh, they'll they'll write the form up. You have a form, you can write it up, and they can go from there. And it, it'll be your call to make on that one now. Nine times out of ten, most DQs will be going by the, the referee. But that particular call, nine times out of ten, we're going to rely on your judgment because you saw it. I did. I had a DQ a kid, and it wasn't. So it's, are you sure they broke before the line? If I DQ him and the coach come on and protest, it's going to be on you. All right? You good? All right. That concludes that part of it. If I didn't miss anything, I hope I didn't. Any other questions later? If you come to mind, just ask me. Ask me. Yeah, because I've been doing this. Yeah. All right. We were supposed to be done by one hour and one half, and we've already reached that. So those people who can't stay, uh, I understand you, you're formally dismissed uh, from the training, but you still get credit for the board training, and I will do another training to back up this tra the training for today for those people who can be here and for the extended time. So we can go on right now and mosey on down toward the uh, pole vault mat, the pole vault pit, and we'll start this instruction from there. Say that again one more time, Gilmore. Okay, in position one and position nine, this flag, number nine, is to let, them, let the athlete know that the minute timer has started, okay? My flag is position one is letting them know that the pit is open and ready for competition. You're ready to vault. So, because we are communicating one and nine, that's a, right now I only have, right now with a limited amount of people, I only have, I have to get the best positions that's gonna help us judge the contest efficiently with the amount of person that we have. If you look down below at the priority of a, for assignment, the minimum we would like to have is three party or fit three party officials. So we would need officials one, position one, two, seven, nine, ten, three and five, and four and six to be in place. Three and five are positioned by the standards. Four and six are positioned by the standards. One left, one right. Those are the people we can use from volunteers. They don't have to be formal. They just have to be able to follow instruction. Okay? So now we have now you have all the information. If you look down below, it, the, the schedule of assignments, all this needs to be filled in so we can be accurate when we have a conversation with a coach. If a coach says my child didn't my student did not have an opportunity or did not uh, have opportunity to uh, properly warm up, well we've already covered that they did they had. We're keeping it. We got everybody in position. Uh, when did the warm-ups begin? Well, and at that time, when did they check in for it? Okay. So now you have the vault, whole vault venue set up assignment. Now I'm going to give you something else even more important. I'm all about giving you visuals, the commands. You said three and five can be a volunteer. Oh, here no, 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 no. I said if you have, I said th oh, well, three, four. Three, five, they volunteer. They can be volunteers. Because all they're doing is what we have. Five and Okay, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, five, I'm sorry. Three and four are volunteers. Five and, and six are umpires. I'm sorry, I, I got that in. I'm, that's why I put things in your hand. All right, here's the uh, commands. This is what needs to be said for instruction. Mr. Mr. Wilson gave you verbal. I'm giving it to you in writing. This is what I need you to say. Add a meat. Oh, wait a minute. This is not. This is the duties. I apologize. Let me get you the one I was looking for. Ah, my bad. I have the commands. Here we go. Mm, okay, what am I doing? Oh, 